Hey everyone, how's it going? Everything okay? Yeah. Woo! Nice. All right, cool. So uh, I want to start up and I want to show you something interesting. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, there's like an interesting pattern that was going on with the recent talks. And that is, we have been taught a lot of cross-cutting concerns. So actually Debbie was talking about testing and then Emma was talking about accessibility. A lot of cross-cutting concerns that we usually don't do at work or, you know, we kind of like deprioritize. But the next one is obviously security. So, indeed, let me show you how React applications get hacked if we sometimes use insecure coding or maybe bad packages and things like that. Now, this is a security doc. So, this is application security domain and it's very, very, very serious. I would like to ask you to refrain and completely avoid from expressing any sort of laughter or smiles throughout the entire talk. Great, doing a good job on it. I can tell. So yeah, I am a developer advocate at Sneak. I do a bunch of security stuff, open source security stuff. Uh, Sneak usually uh, does really, really cool things. What I like is the developer-friendly security tooling, uh, which is essentially also free for developers, so you could use it. I'll show you how it's really cool and why. Um, and I do a bunch of other things, like uh, part of being a developer at a security company as well and having that experience is that I get to kind of like figure out a lot of other really interesting aspects and domains in development, which is like I can do security research and find and disclose vulnerabilities in NPM packages that you might have used. I can do a bunch of things like security education and you know, share a bunch of information that helps you figure out how to build containers for Node.js applications in a secure way, which is pretty cool as well. I enjoy doing that. I also enjoy building uh, silly CLIs. Um, the top one is like uh, doing like a, a, a terminal user interface for managing Docker containers. So you could just fire that up on the CLI. And I, I wrote like this thing, uh, like a Nordic JS uh, CLI, which I realized I didn't tell anyone yet. So I don't know, do you want to see it? Should we try that? Okay, so um, as CLI goes, I'm just gonna go and, oh, and it is published because I just did it like 30 minutes ago. So you can just go NPX CLI and hopefully it works. It's loading some music. There's like really good vibe here. So it's gonna load that one as well. And that's it, you get a CLI. It's a fully functional, like you can go watch the live stream or whatever. It's pretty cool. So a conference has a CLI. I like that. Maybe we do a talk next year about building this because this was built with React. But I'm pretty bad at front end, so you could see how it's like not well aligned, everything there. We'll talk about that at a different talk though. All right, cool. Thanks. So, uh, you know, full stack JavaScript is like bringing everyone together. You can write JavaScript on the back end, on front end, on spaceships, on Mongo, whatever you want. It also brings together some pains that we all share wherever we do JavaScript, right? Yes. All those faces like, ugh, other NPM package. What new surprises is that going to bring in tonight? So the thing is, I want to tell you that there's a data-based reason for why you're feeling this way, right? When I do an NPM install, I also feel that way because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to bring in. It's database, actually security researched as well. For example, this article from 2019, just a few years ago, security research that was made and was showing us that you know, the average NPM install command is actually bringing in trust. You're trusting, essentially, 79 other third-party packages, 39 other maintainers, just by bringing like, the average NPM install command, right? It's pretty scary. A recent article has actually shown us different ways that are related to supply chain security. For example, this one, uh, what are weak links in the supply chain of NPM from 2022? So this is very early this year. Not sure if a bunch of you had a chance to read this one, but it's pretty interesting. It shows us how I can sign up to NPM. Maybe I use my own domain address for emails when I sign up. And potentially, if that's expired after like three years and I didn't renew it or whatever, I just like stopped, someone else can actually re-register that 
to you know, the whole I forgot password, get their email stuff, and hijack other packages from other maintainers. That's essentially what happened. So this whole supply chain thing is like really, really large, right? Like we have crossed the two million bar for NPM packages already. Like this is pretty, you know, pretty big already. But also, it's not just an NPM packages and security around that as a talk, right? Like, am I really going to talk to you about XSS in React because it's been here for a while, Vue.js, you know, uh, Angular, all of those has been really, really modern in the way that they actually help us mitigate cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that you know, are very dangerous if they do happen. So yes, I am going to talk to you about this, because look at this code which I found on Twitter a while back. Let me, if you're not seeing the horror yet, let me zoom in, help you out. This is what happens to explain it and have a baseline here for everyone. This is essentially a React application code but someone is using the native API to render something on the page, which means React doesn't get in play. So there's like a lot of knowledge also, like how to do these things. So yes, XSS is still happening, and there's like a bunch of ways of doing it. Now, you know, React is mostly secure by default. That's already, what? What do you mean, mostly? I thought React is secure by default. Well, to understand that, we need to understand two different concepts. One is, you know, what does it mean exactly secure by default? And then this little thing called cross-site scripting, and like, why is that really something uh, that we should be worried about? So let's, you know, break that down. Essentially, if there's a React code in your app, like that on the left, uh, shows you, you know, the JSX code of what you do with a data point. And then maybe you get that from someone posting something to the database before, and then you fetch it or whatever. It gets into, the, into your data uh, structure. So you push that in, and then what will be the result if someone adds something like script alert, which put a, or some, you know, some other you know, non-trivial JavaScript that alters the, the page? It's going to look like this. When you look at it on the page itself that gets rendered, that's what you see. But it's not exactly what you think it is. It's, you do see the same thing as a text, but those special characters that are you know, the left uh, angular bracket, the right angular bracket, they do not actually symbolize an actual DOM element, right? They get what is called output encoding, they get encoded into a thing that's called HTML entities. They get represented in a way that when the browser sees that, it knows to actually go and render those as actual left and right brackets and not as actual DOM elements. So that's what the security folks like to call this, right? This is uh, the security lingo is actually output encoding, and that is what React does by default, but mostly, okay? So it means, yes, you still have some pitfalls that might you know, be happening without you knowing or you know, not knowing. So we're going to you know, jump between the live coding stuff uh, back and forth and see a few examples. But I have this uh, built this application, which is, you could imagine as this being an NPM in an alternative universe. There's like a package author. They have some packages. They have the description of packages or Twitter link to find them there or whatever. And Really, just that Twitter link, let's talk about that, because you, know, you may code this kind of feature in your apps. So let's see how it goes. Right, so I've got my app over here, if everything still works. Big enough? Yeah, do you want to change the color of the theme? Should we do that? What do you like? Because someone's going to ask me, hey, what font do you use? Hey, what, this is good? <laughs> Great preferences. OK, no, you're going to stay with this one. So um, let's see what's going on here. I essentially have a React app. And as you can see, it is not a trivial hello world where you would see three lines of code. And I will tell you where the issues are. Because code, in reality, is kind of messy. And not everything is fully, all of the time, very compatible and readable and maintainable and whatever, composable. So. This is an actual app. And I'm, I'm going to bring in a database for us. Let's send it over to the right here. And that database is essentially the data that we are going to use, so that we do not need to handle here some API calls back and forth, and so we need to bring in a different server, and so on. So this is the database. And on the left, we have the app code. 
And so I'm going to go in and show you. There's like this Twitter link thing of Kate Libby. And if I search here for database.twitter link, there we go. I see it over here. There's a button, uh, it has a class, a color, href, whatever. So far, so good. Any issues? OK, we're good. So let's first see if this works. Refresh this quickly. It does. I'll uh, do a bit of zooming in as well. I have a Twitter link. Let's see if it works. It does. Oh my god. Thank you so much that this is a not safe for work issue here. Whew. OK. So nothing bad there. Um, let's change it. Let's say, um, let's say the outer name is over here is not Kate Libby. It's actually image source nothing on error alert. What happens now? React saves us, right? Just add over there the outer name, JS6. OK, let's see what happens. Yay, no alert. Good thing. Let's play with this a bit more. Bring this back to whatever that was. And should we change the Twitter link now? JavaScript alert, the classic thing. Let's go back here. Reload this thing. Uh-oh. What's going on? I thought React was supposed to be secure. So what's happening here is React is encoding some stuff, as we've seen before. But if you push a direct input into HTML attributes, like href, it does not get encoded into anything to protect you. OK, so tip number one, and it's super easy to mess or just pass some data along to props and forget that you need to like, do something about it, because that could be someone's input for you. So let's try and fix it, right? Let's go ahead and try to uh, add some code here that fixes it. I'll do this. And oh, there we go. That's helpful. Um, GitHub Copilot for the rescue. And this. And you're going to stop me if you think there's like an issue there. But I'm going to do, uh, no, not that one. But if Twitter link that index of JavaScript, yeah, that's pretty good. Set Twitter link to <laughs> Pablo. OK. Would like to know what uh, Copilot was reading before doing this. So, good show. All right. I don't mind. I'll, I'll leave a bubble here. Like, let's try cats something. Cats are the best. That's true. Okay, we're going to go with Pablo anyway. <laughs> kind of a dog person, but also a cat person. Um, I don't know, unless there's any issues there. Let's try and reload this one. Yeah, did not work. Because, oh, of course, did not work because I need to use twitter.link over here instead of directly the database. So, all right, Pablo's here, no XSS. So far, so good. I promised Debbie I'll write a test to check this and then push to production. So, good to go? I'm going to go. It goes to production. I'm going to go. Don't do it. OK, why not? You don't know. OK. <laughs> so it goes. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Well, I mean, look at the test, right? We're saying if it equals JavaScript colon. And so every, everything that starts with JavaScript colon is going to be a mess for us, a security mess, so we're going to stop it. Uh, but that's like not a good idea of how to mitigate against this specifically. So I'm going to go and change this to Java, because I got some Java friends, like friends. <laughs> let's, let's be real here. Uh, but uh, let's see if that works. I don't know. What do you think? If they try to hack me, those Java friends, 
we're going to be able to do it. So that's not a really good way of writing the test. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Well, um, it took me a long time to think of the following algorithm, and I used some AI to suggest it. Let's see. All right, I think we nailed this one. Definitely going to go to production if this test works. Yes, got it. All right, so no, no, no applause at this point because it's not yet ready. Why isn't this yet yet ready to go to production? Yeah, okay. Well, there are those other characters that you don't always see, but they're there. Okay, I'll try to show you kind of what I mean. Did we get the, uh, this one? Okay, so let's try this again and then see how this changes. So what if I do, if my input from the attacker is actually this, slash x, 9, 10, when I'm like, what is slash x, 9, 10? Is that like a new hack? All right, let's see what this magic does. Uh, my browser is over here. So, apparently, there are control characters that can be used, like new line, carriage return, end of medium, all of those kind of things that can get added. And so, this is not a really good approach to solving things. So, at this point, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to continue our learnings or other issues. But for the app to work, we're going to take this back, make sure it does work. OK, so we've kind of learned a couple of new things. First off, you know, do not like at all ever use user input if you don't need to. Definitely not because it's something that can get added into your DOM. And if it does get added, well, while React can save you from things like, you know, the JSX for elements and stuff like that, and there's output encoding there, it does not apply to those attributes. Okay, so completely avoid user input if you can, but we know that you can't. Completely avoid it in href attributes if you can and other attributes. And if you can't, there are other ways to s properly encode the data. So what we try to do is work on a deny list, trying to block JavaScript colon, trying to block it and make it lowercase because try to block uppercase. And if I went ahead and tried to block that control character or something else, someone would think of a different way of doing this. Okay, so there should be other ways that we should do that, and this is kind of like our takeaways so far. Well, I also, since this is like an NPM registry kind of thing that I kind of like built up here, I also wanted to be able to show the package JSON because like I thought it was really cool if I could just like you know, query a package and see what's going on with the package JSON stuff. Like, that's useful information there. So I figured, well, how will I do it? I'm not going to code all of that thing myself to parse it and, I, you know, uh, indentize it and all of those things. I'm going to find a package that does that, um, and I can give it the JSON. It will do the whole thing and support theming for me. So, so far, makes sense. I'm a classic, typical JavaScript developer. So we start with npm install. React JSON pretty, which is a real package. Then import it, again, super simple. And then I have like this other uh, com uh, component, which it uh, uses that package. I'll you know, add some props, but essentially I'll just also add that package manifest that I get from you know, whatever uh, system of the backend or so, and we'll just display it. And so it will look like this. So let's see how that works. So here's the package manifest on the right. And if I scroll a bit here, there we go. So it works. I'm going to go and try to hack it a bit. 
like let's say like you don't control the user input, I control it as the attacker in this case, and I will name my package. How do we go? Name it like that. Okay, hot reload works pretty well here from the container and with it. So looks like this package works as expected. Nothing weird here. Any ideas what should I change? Try different things. Remove the quotes. Well, I can't remove them here because it's actually a valid JSON, but I like where you're going with that. Well, let's try something else. Like it looks like this package does something that does work. Um, bring it to something like that. But let's say it does like sanitize the data or whatever it does there. Like I haven't looked at the code yet. Maybe as an attacker, I'll try to think. Perhaps it doesn't like. Uh, permutate and recourse all of the actual fields in the tree. So like we're, here we have uh, a nested you know, object within the object, and I'll go ahead and try to change that. And I think we got it right. A bit hard to see here. There we go. And rendered well, so no issues there. Ideas. I could. Perhaps the keys, OK. So what if I went ahead, since I control this, and I'd be able to to say, well, you know what? This isn't even a JSON. I control this. If I'm able to taint the system through one way or the other, you're just getting whatever props and pushing them on the screen. There's an XSS. All right, so this is a bit interesting. Like, why is it even happening? Um, I'll go ahead and maybe run an NPM audit thing. Let me run that with a production flag because it's going to find a bunch of dev dependencies, which I don't really care about. And it found uh, patch reversal in moment. Fine. There's like a regular expression in the live service in moment.js. I guess that's the one. Didn't really find anything in React.json, but they do have it. React.json pretty. It says a one there's a one vulnerability there. So if I were to like maybe perhaps scan it with snake, Let's see what I get. So it's going to go through uh, everything on your production dependencies by default. And I do say I have like a bunch of vulnerabilities, but this one actually does find another one in React.json pretty. So the database vulnerabilities information of the tools we're working it with is really, really important. This one, for example, is like very outdated from you know NPM audit not finding this vulnerability from about 2019 or so. So you could be vulnerable but not know it. So that's interesting so far, but why are we even vulnerable to this? So let me show you what's going on here. This is, anyone seen the sneak advisor before? Raise your hand. A bunch of people. All right, cool. Well, other people are now figuring this out. So this is a free website thing that we've built. And it's, it's to me, when I go to NPM, like to find packages, that's like my de facto. But then I like click on the home page for GitHub because I want to find the other metrics, like the community and does it have tests and all of those things. So we kind of like build this thing, which if I uh, shoot in something like React, uh, what was it, JSON, pretty, it finds stuff in the database and it actually scores them. So I can go in. And this gets a package health score, right? And it's like a really good way. It's not like you know, in a, an ideal world, I don't want to score packages, you know, and, and tell people, you know, hey, you know, maybe avoid a package. But I, because I feel bad, you know, for maintainers and everyone else. But especially, it helps you to kind of like, you, as developers, we kind of like need to make decisions, and it's really hard to quantify, you know, the life of a package or a project. But this breaks down things like security and popularity and maintenance. And if something wasn't released in the past year or two years, you know, perhaps it won't be maintained anymore. And if there's like a new vulnerability coming out, you might not know about it. So uh, you know, this got a 50, which is whatever. I'll, I'll live with that. But it has a decent amount of downloads 
40,000 downloads a week. So people are actually using this in production. I do hope they're using the latest version, uh, which, which did get a fix. Um, but let's drive in and see what's going on there. There's like an XSS fix. If we dive in, I could get up commit and well, you can see what happened before, right? Like why all of this was even happening is not just a test. I'll uh, make this a bit bigger so you can all see it. Okay. So this isn't why yet it was happening, but you can see why at all that XSS vector was possible for this package. So the fact that you may not be using dangerously set inner HTML in your code because you know, the React team has done a great job naming it in a very proper manner, doesn't mean that others know the exact same things, right? And you, they might use it, and you hope that the code is not vulnerable to that. So I've currently already seen how you might be vulnerable to, you know, issues related to React code because it's not output encoding href and other attributes data. If you pass data there, it's bad. And also due to vulnerable NPM packages and, you know, React component that you do get from the ecosystem. And this is how they could potentially, you know, provide issues to your, uh, to your application. So kind of the way that I feel about that when using those NPM packages is like, you know, I find a library, I find a component, I download it, like I think it's going to be great. But at the end of the day, what can you say? So, kind of last take, uh, you know, avoid avoiding that, okay? It doesn't mean that other people are doing it. So, you know, you probably know to avoid it, but need to check it. Also, scanning your dependencies is really important. And I mean, you can tr use NPM on it, like it's a good tool. But also, I really advise you maybe combine it with other tools because not everyone always get the same coverage at the same time or whatever. So it's like costing you essentially nothing to just run two tools, um, you know, all free and open source and different options that you have. And you'd probably be able to find more issues than if you use perhaps one tool. So it's going to be, you know, that last takeaway. But for the last, uh, for the last one, as we do have a few more minutes, I want to show you something interesting. So let's look at that fix because perhaps I can use dangerously set inner HTML because they did still use it. They haven't limited the fact of using it. What did they actually do? If we go back to that website, Let's explore this for a second, okay? Look at a test. Let's learn from a, a, a vulnerability and how it was fixed. So here's the entire code for that uh, JSON pretty thing. It's all in this, um, you know, TSX file. Um, we can see a bunch of stuff happening. There's like an XSS function here. And apparently that whole thing was possible, the whole, uh, you know, image source as, as, a, as instead of a JSON because while, uh, where is it at? While everything was just fine, essentially, before, it's like a try and catch block. So every time that the data was OK, it was actually a JSON, it was going through this code path, which returned, in a, in a dangerously set in HTML, this pretty call, which uh, did escape, if you look at you know, what's underscore pretty, it's essentially, you know, its own way to sanitize information. So I could essentially also sanitize those kind of things. And if I had been using the same XSS function here and pushing that into the code, well, maybe I might be still vulnerable to this. So I probably should let you know that if I did that, I would still be vulnerable if I added it. Uh, where is that? So we do have an a dangerously set in our HTML. And if I copy that function and I've just put it over, over here, that would be still an issue for us, OK? You could think, hey, if they escaped it, I can just escape it and use it for my own business logic because I also have, you know, reasons to do dangerously set in our HTML. I need to add a specific class, a data point, whatever. So if you'd added it here, I'd be able to show you a vector of attack that still exists. The reason for that is that you are still vulnerable because XSS escaping and output encoding, that happens in a very, very specific context. Like you can do it for HTML, for HTML 
DOM elements and then for HTML attributes and for CSS. And the escaping and encoding is not the same. Okay, so that would have been a mistake to just copy paste that code and just put it here if we had done that. Luckily, we didn't, and you know we've kind of like learned from you know if you have this kind of case, you know you need, to, you need to be more careful where you add those XSS issues. So kind of like you know don't use, of course, dangerously set in HTML if you can. You you know please escape it or encode it, and if you have any questions, just reach out. You know, available on Twitter, my email, whatever you want to do. Happy to chat with you and kind of like you know go through this. So we've learned a few you know new learnings about XSS, uh, about for React and you know where it can come from, whether that's like NPM packages or your own code or stuff like that. If you want to extend that, there's the cross-site scripting learn lessons on the Sneak Learn. They're all, of course, free. It's like a really interactive way of getting you through it. There are also things like uh, you know the blog goes to like you know uh, best practices for React security, so that's all on the website. Uh, we've learned about the Sneak Advisor, which is also pretty helpful. And I haven't shown you the coolest thing yet, so I'm going to leave it here as kind of like a cliffhanger. And if you want to figure out more about it, you know, I already stole it because this is basically a VS Code extension that Sneak has that finds those XSS vulnerabilities and other, you know, SQL injection or whatever other issues you have with JavaScript and Java on your IDE. And it shows you where it is and how to fix it. So try it out. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, here is the last takeaways. Use a scanning tool, as we said, you know, SAST in your IDE is pretty fast for code security and automate your dependency upgrades because you do want to be at the latest. So thank you very much. Hope you all stay secure. <laughs>